food additives. Let's talk about those next. Here's the hard part is food additives are in literally everything. You could even go and get like an organic. Uh, I was looking at some organic gravy, like a gravy mixture, but it had added stuff to it, like maltodextrin and flavors and stuff like that. And so of course you always, there's a spectrum, right? There's the straight garbage, MSG, carrageenine, Splenda type things that we'll go into. But then you've got the spectrum where maybe you find organic spices that had a little flavor added, but it was an organic flavor and you don't worry about it as much. Correct. Yep. I like that. The spices and the flavoring are going to be big. Uh, MSG, aspartame, they're going to be more excitotoxins. They can increase brain fog. They can stimulate your brain neurons to death, so to speak. Um, That's where some of that data came from. So not the best thing long-term. And of course, you know, inflammation in the gut can create inflammation in the brain. So if you're listening to this and you don't have any gut issues, most people associate foods or additives or bad fats with gut issues. But a lot of times it could just be increased inflammation. And that inflammation could be manifesting from joint pain or headaches or mood issues or brain fog. So just remember, when we talk about some of these things, it may not necessarily be connected to a digestive issue or a gut issue. And that's the hardest thing people to wrap their heads around. Yeah, let's talk about this study we've got here on food additives, specifically Splenda. Uh, It's ridiculous. You'll see things that are promoted as healthy, but then they have added Splenda to them. So there was a paper, it was 2018 inflammatory bowel disease was the paper, I guess. I don't see any other other journal it was from, but long story short, Splenda, it says here in the the conclusion of the study, is that Splenda promoted dysbiosis. And we did a whole show on that. We've done many, many, many on dysbiosis, but basically an imbalance of good and bad bacteria, which then creates inflammation, intestinal permeability, and and on and on. But all you you could do that just with Splenda. So it's like, oh, I eat paleo, but yet I put Splenda or like one of those little fake drink packets. You know, those little have you seen those? The little packets where it's like a a fruit punch and you put it in your water but it's got Splenda instead of Stevia. It's just garbage. Yes, not good, not good. Yeah, um, if you want something like that, you're much better off getting like a Sweet Leaf brand and putting a couple of drops of, of Stevia in there with something like that or using an essential oil like uh, lemon or lime or just grabbing a lime or lemon and just squeezing it. And that's a much better way to do it. I like to do monk fruit. I've got uh, a little monk bottle of some monk fruit liquid. Yep. And yep. so we'll just take half a lime, half a lemon, about five drops of monk fruit and you've got an amazing lemonade and you're not going to need any of those little fake Splenda flavor packs. They're just terrible. Yeah. And with flavoring in general, you want to make it a minority of the time because when you're putting something, a whole bunch of sweet stuff in there and your tongue's hitting sweet, your brain's like program that sweet means calories and calories also mean sugar as well. So there could be a minor insulin spike that could happen. And it's just not good to program your brain sweet, 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 no nutrition, no calories. So it's not good to have that long-term, but if we're kind of doing an 80, 20 thing, and that's kind of in your 20% and you're trying to use a healthy cheat option as a replacement, I think it's fine. Yeah. And you're saying basically the body's getting tricked, even if it is a natural sweetener, you don't want to hit that sweet button over and over. Yeah. I just want to draw a line between everyday staples And things that are healthier cheat options. That's in the healthier cheat option category. It's not a healthier staple category. Yeah, you don't want to live on like the stevia soda, for example. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're much better off. Staples would be Topo Chico, Pellegrino, filtered water. Maybe add an essential oil to it or add a squeezed lemon or a lime. Those are going to be more of your staples. And these other things are going to be in your 20% category. Let's talk about this too. There was another paper that we had here on carrageenine, which is a seaweed based polysaccharide. A lot of times it's put in toothpaste, but it's often in a lot of food and like sauces and anything that needs to be thick. So a lot of times now you'll see carrageenine free in certain products, but that also can exacerbate inflammatory bowel disease. And there are some papers on both Splenda and carrageenine. So carrageenine is probably healthier than Splenda, but it can still negatively affect the gut. And at the end of the day, we're just saying eat real food because if it's not processed, if it's a processed paleo style food, it could still have some negative qualities to it. Got it. Yep. A hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. You have uh carrageenine and there's another one I forget. Um, that's like an emulsifier like that. Um, it was like guar gum. And yeah. Guar gum. Others. That's what it is. Okay. Some of those I think are also a little bit higher in FODMAPs too. So people that have significant SIBO can sometimes get a little bit more bloated 
from some of those things. So it's good to keep those in mind. I know there's, I think it's native forest. It makes the coconut milk, coconut cream without the guar gum. So another thing that could be there, there's some studies showing they can be beneficial and not bad. So kind of go back and forth on it. So if you have a negative implication with it, that could be it. We may want to just find a healthier 